Hey guys, welcome back to the second module of Binary Relations in the Lungs and the Bronchial uh, area. So, we have seen a quite a uh, good things about bronchial papilloma, alveolar adenoma, papillary adenoma, sclerosing pneumocytoma in the previous video. If you missed that, please go and have a look at that because whatever we are going to read today, that's just three tumors. Uh, one is just for namesake. This will be used in comparison with that and also you'll know why we are actually learning about benign tumors of lung when we don't even see much of benign tumors of lung in your routine practice, right? So if you're ready, ready for the game and if you have completed the first uh, video, come uh, let's go and uh, deep dive into three more tumors uh, starting with a very complicated name tumor and we'll end with a mu mucus gland adenoma, fine? So the first tumor in today's lecture, what you're going to read is it's a bronchiolar adenoma, fine? It's not a bronchial adenoma. It's a bronchiolar adenoma, which makes it, it's obviously going to be seen in the lung palenchyma, right? I have one more name for this, ciliary muconodular papillary tumor. That is actually much more of a better name, a ciliated muconodular papillary tumor, okay? Because this gives almost everything that the tumor has and what we are going to discuss. Ciliated muconodular papillary tumor. So which means it's a benign peribronchiolar tumor with two layering of epithelium. Right? Ciliated muconodular papillary. So it will have a basal layer which is very very continuous and also has ciliated mucus and club cells. All of them will be there in the luminal layer. Right? So I have dual lining. Let's say I'm having a luminal epithelium here. Okay. Which might have ciliated lining or it could just be a mucus a simple uh, normal columnar epithelium can also be there here without a cilia or it can look like a club cell right and by default they'll have papillary architecture right so the epithelium which is lining might have cilia or a simple columnar epithelium with a papillary architecture and the most important thing is you'll have a continuous layer of basal epithelium that's important the two layering is very very characteristic which you have never seen in almost any case of benign uh, lesions of the lung till now we have discussed, right? That's one. Papillary architecture sometimes can be flat glandular as well. Luminal cells might be mucinous, ciliated or club cell type and a continuous basal epithelium. It may be very tricky or difficult for an untrained eye to differentiate between the two. You might look like it's only one layer, but it's actually two layer. We look at it very carefully. But if you worry that is it a two layer or is it something else you can look at this second layer or the basal layer this will be positive for p40 or it's also positive for ck5 bar 6 fine it's just a basal epithelium that's all so why is it important for me to identify the basal epithelium because without basal epithelium i might uh, think of an adenocarcinoma in situ like if i disregard them i might put them into adenocarcinoma in situ because papillary area continuous lining of the everything right so here this is important for me to differentiate from adenocarcinoma in situ adenocarcinoma in situ will not have basal layer there will be no basal layer obviously atp or lepidic pattern of growth will come into play or i might even sometimes misregard them as in peribronchiolar metaplasia which is not a tumor where i need not do a surgery it might be a part and parcel of interstitial lung disease, that's all, right? Where the circumscription, everything will not come into play. The luminal cells is by default uh, TTFN positive and might be variable if it's a little bit proximal uh, bronchiolar origin because distal bronchiolar origin will by default be TTFN positive, right? So without wasting much time, let's go and have a look at the slide. Where is it? Yes, let's zoom out, okay? Obviously, this is the tumor has been excised and kind of not very well circumscribed a little bit going in between to the normal lung as well right so if you zoom in a little bit papillary growth pattern in this case is not very obvious it's more of a glandular flat growth pattern right but if you zoom out zoom in zoom in zoom in what one thing i am sure most of you can appreciate is a cilia can you appreciate the cilia you can though not every cell is having but yes there are definitely few cells with whiskers not these but look at that that's a beautiful cilia I'm sure you'll appreciate a beautiful cilia here, right? That's one. So I can have ciliated epithelium. I can have a columnar epithelium or I can have a club cell like an epithelium as well, right? The second thing what I was talking about the basal layer. Look at this, focus on this. Columnar, basal, columnar, basal, columnar, basal, right? Look at this, columnar, basal, columnar, basal, right? Only when you focus very carefully, you'll be able to identify, but almost everything here, columnar basal will have two layering will have two layering will have two layering the two layering is very very important let's go to a very different area 
columnar basal it's compressed here basal right but the two layering is very 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 classical looking like a myoepithelium of the breast parent came right it's very look at that that's a beautiful thing you have a classical lining of basal background and a columnar theorem here also right so when you have the dual layering that's classical for your bronchiolar adenoma or your ciliated muconodular papillary tumor though i don't have papillary architecture here right so the lining epithelium luminal has different variations and the basal layer is very very important if you feel that it's difficult for you to identify the basal layer please uh, be a guest and go and have a look at the uh, IHC of P40 or CK5 bar 6, fine. So the next thing, what I want to discuss is, I, I actually want to compare two things. One, we call it a mucinous cyst adenoma. Okay, not very difficult to identify. It's simple mucinous cyst adenoma, very benign looking columnar epithelium, that's all. With mucin secretion, no invasion, no ATP, a blank. And we have something called mucus gland adenoma. It looks more or less simple, more or less similar. Here also, I'll have mucus gland adenoma. I'll have glands resembling bronchial seromucinous glands. That's all. Simple, normal thing. You'll have uh, clear oncocytic ciliated cells. Might be bland, simple columnar uh, goblet cells also, right? So how do I differentiate these two? And is it required for me to differentiate these two? From an exam point of view, yes. Because if you miss them, if you don't write them properly, because you have not taken into classical pointers. One by definition, mucinous histidinoma, it is a lesion seen in the lung parenchyma. This is a lesion which grows as an endobronchial growth. So because if I so if I make a mistake, I'm making a very gross mistake. I can never see a mucous gland adenoma in a lung parenchyma because it's coming from the bronchium. It's a classical benign endobronchial growth. Like I said, it resembles the seromucinous glands of the bronchus, right? Here it's going to be the lung. So it'll be the ideal in the periphery of the lung, right? It'll be in the proximal airway. That's the most classical difference, right? Apart from that, I do have differences. General mucous cystadenoma will be a single mucin fill cyst here. I might have solid and cystic areas as well, right? When you look at the histomorphology or microscopy here, cystic architecture with mucinous epithelium. That's all. But here, I might have multiple architecture. I might have cystic areas. I might have tubular areas. I might have papillary areas. I might even have solid areas. Again, I might have columnar. I might have cuboidal. Or I might even have a classical goblet cell type. It's very different. But the classical difference is your location. Location will help me clue saying this or that. But rest everything is okay. Mucinous cystadenoma since it is uh, arising from the lung so they are just pan ck positive they are td for negative but this also is td for negative here right so which might help me at some point of time is if at all if i come to ihc cea is negative here cea is positive here because the uh, bronchial mucus is generally ca positive you might different uh, find it difficult for us sometime to differentiate between colloid carcinoma or a low-grade mucoabdominal carcinoma in the bronchial gland but atp is something which is very 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 classical in any carcinoma that's what i've been discussing a lot again and again and again you will never see them in both of these tumors they are very 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 bland tumors right i have only one case here that's your mucus gland adenoma i don't have a case of an uh, uh, mucinous cystadenoma. This is a mucous gland adenoma. Mucous gland adenoma is seen in the bronchus as an endobronchial growth. Cartilage, normal bronchus as an endobronchial growth. That's a first finding, right? Though I won't say that it is uh, very much papillary, but I do see a little bit of papillary fronds here. So it's not same. I can have solid papillary, multiple tubular, multiple growth pattern, right? But if you zoom, who will call this malignant? It's very simple, bland, simple columnar goblet cells. That's all. Not even low cuboidal. You can see a little bit of papillary inward projections here. It's the location which gives away the clue. You can see a normal bronchial gland here. That's how you diagnose a mus mucus gland adenoma, right? That's all about this video. It's a pretty short video. We have compiled close to, I think, seven tumors in the entire lung and the bronchial region which can come. Two in the bronchial, bronchial papilloma and mucus gland adenoma and rest every five in the lung, right? So if you have any more doubts, follow us in the RxDS pathology page and if you're a subscriber, you'll have our exclusive WhatsApp group where you can discuss more, right? Thank you. See you once again. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anshad. Bye-bye.